Welcome to our backyard. This is the Backyard Philosophy Podcast. We are two friends having a discussion after everyone else has passed out or gone to bed. Grab a drink and listen as we discuss everything from automation, space exploration, and why the meaning of life is 42. War is an unfortunate thing. War is a thing that is tied with blood, sorrow, and death. But what if humanity had a war that is solely a drinking slash capture the flag game? Well, you might say it's too good to be true. And that will never happen. You, my friends, would be wrong. And you clearly don't know about the whiskey war. Speaking of drinking, Nick, how are you and what are you drinking? I'm doing great, and I'm drinking Coors Light. I guess I should have been drinking whiskey for this one. Don't worry, my friend. I have you. I'm drinking some native whiskey, and I'll carry us both to the finish line. Today, I want to talk about the Whiskey War. A war between Canada and Greenland. Granted, this is Danish, Greenland, so the Danes and Canadians. All fighting over a useless piece of land that is in the perpetual unknown, and has a caused a war that has no fighting that has ever taken place. This small piece of unimportant land is Hens Island, located quite literally halfway between Canada and Greenland, in the most northern land of Canada and about halfway in Greenland. And Greenland being a Denmark territory, again, makes it a war between Canada and Denmark. But I digress. This island is in the dead center of the Nara Strait. This strait is what separates Canada and Greenland. Hans Island is half a mile square island, if that. No natural resources. No military advantages. It is pretty much just a rock in the middle of a strait. But humans being humans, we want it. So, both sides claim control of this island but before i get into the conflict we need to talk about how do people not know who owns it that goes back to the 1880s when britain was no longer the empire it was and was dividing the remaining of their territories into regions for other countries but unfortunately at this time they were using maps that date back to the 16th century these maps being old and the island being so small, well, Hens Island was not even on the maps. So a little confusion happened of when the territories were being distributed. Hell, at this time, most people didn't even know it existed. It wasn't until about the 1930s where people go like, oh yeah, there's a piece of land in this strait. And people went, what? What are you talking about? That looks like an island, right? I guess it is. Do we own it? I don't know. Sure. So, in 1933, Greenland declined this worthless piece of rock, this half a square mile on island. It's ours now. But, Greenland organization that declared ownership of this island was quickly dissolved, and all rulings that they created during its lifetime was dismissed and dissolved. This organization would eventually become part of the UN, so they kind of made conflict of interest with saying, hey, Greenland owns this rock. So, their rulings were all completely dismissed. So once again in history, people have no idea who owns this worthless piece of rock. It wasn't until about World War II and the Cold War, when the borders were hard drawn and distributed, where the island came back to discussion. At this time, people were trying to figure out what was red, what was blue, what was Soviet, what was democratic, what was what. Was what. But nobody really cared. I guess it wasn't anyone's, or maybe it was part of Greenland, but again... I don't think anyone cared who owned this piece of rock. And again, I keep saying piece of rock. This is like a small island in the middle of a lake kind of thing where it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter until booze got involved. And Nick, since this is a Denmark-Canadian war, what are some stereotypes you know about Canadians? Uh, Where do we start? Maple syrup, hockey, Molson, uh... Let's say it has to do with their personality. They're not fighters. There we go. Well, 
Canadians being nice Canadians, captured the island in 1984 in the nicest way possible. Some Canadian troops visit the island, not sure if they happened to just come across an island that was part of their territory or went there on purpose, but the Canadian troops arrived nonetheless on the island. And, you know, for shits and giggles, they erected a Canadian flag, made a crude sign saying, Welcome to Canada, and left a bottle of Canadian club whiskey. And Nick, you're a prime minister of a country, a diplomat, a role model, a public figure, and some Canadians just put their flag and whiskey on your quote-unquote island. Are you going to let that slide, or are you going to do something about it? Um, Say pitter-patter, let's get at her. There you go, damn straight. The Greenland minister who heard what the Canadians did went, oh, hell no. They went to the island, took down the Canadian items, and put up their own flag and left a bottle of Danish schnapps and a sign pointed at Canada of saying, Welcome to the Danish island. But you aren't going to waste a good bottle of Canadian whiskey. That'd be a shame not to drink it, wouldn't it be, Nick? I mean, you know, you don't waste booze. That's what the Dan- That's what Greenland did. They drank the nice Canadian whiskey. Thus, the first elaborate drinking war started. The whiskey war. Every time Canadian members would go to Hans Island, they would put up their flag and leave a Canadian whiskey, and vice versa. Every time a Greenland member would visit the island, they would put up their flag and leave a bottle of schnapps. Now, I want you to imagine both sides raising their flag is absolutely hilarious. I like. I implore you all to look up images of each side raising their flags. It's a small pebble in a in a river. With a flag being raised and everyone holding a bottle. It is absolutely hilarious. This has been going on for decades. Some Canadian and some Danish representatives have tried to solve this problem. Heavy quotations on problem. On who owns the island. They even tried making it a shared sovereignty land. But nobody knows of it to the end of the war. This quote unquote war of raising a flag and sharing a bottle of booze. And if I have to guess, I would say it hasn't. There's nothing better than pranking your buddy. And to do it with simply a bottle of booze, a crude welcome sign, and a flag sounds like the grandest time. I I don't see the fun ever stopping. Do you, Nick? No, there's, there's no reason to stop that. For decades now, over three decades, Denmark and Canada have been at war over this small pebble. And they've been fighting with the most sophisticated equipment that the military could ever afford. A flag, a sign, and a good bottle of booze. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the Whiskey War. And that has been going on for three decades, and I don't see it ever ending soon. Nick, I have a question for you. How great would it be if every war ever was just simply was a drinking game? Oh, I think uh, think that might put some countries on top that weren't on top before you know what they say about canada right your army's weak but our beer's stronger oh i think the irish would be the strongest mil- either the irish or russians would be the strongest military in the world if it was a drinking game yeah i don't know i'd, I'd still have to worry about the the russians for sure but i think uh i think china, china wouldn't be as bad big of a superpower now <laughs> I, again, I can't implore you all to look up this image. Imagine a bunch of people in Arctic clothing. Usually it's red because both the Danish and the Canadians both have red and white in their colors. Walking to this island, and this island is in the middle of a 12-mile strait. Like, this has, this this is literally a worthless piece of rock. I don't even know if trees grow on it, Nick. Bring it back to trees, which you love. This is just a rock. Yet... You still have this, the dignity and the tenacity to write, welcome to Canada, welcome to Greenland, welcome to Danish land, and put your flag up. Just as, just as like a fun little poke at a friend. That sounds absolutely fantastic to me. And just a bunch of guys standing in their winter clothing, holding a bottle of schnapps. Now granted, nobody has confirmed nor denied that the bottles that have been left there have been drinking. But Nick, if you had to wager a guest, if bottles that are left there by your quote-unquote enemy are left there full of booze, and 
they go home with you, I imagine they have to get completely wasted, right? You have to celebrate somehow. You have to use what you got, right? I imagine it's like, oh, Friday, better go invade that uh, invade that island, you know, before I am done for the day. <laughs> Oh, that's a great thing, too. There is no set time. Like, this isn't, like, an annual event. This is just like, eh, I feel like invading another country. I'm going to go take down their flag and put up my flag. And I'll leave a bottle of booze and a new welcome sign for them. That's it. There's there's no time schedule. It's come as you guys and come as you go. Just leave a bottle of booze when you leave. And that sounds absolutely wonderful. And now, Nick, you know the whiskey war between Denmark and Canada that's been lasting for more than three decades, and I doubt that it'll ever end. Or at least, in my heart, I hope it never ends. Thank you all for listening. Thanks for listening to the Backyard Philosophy Podcast. We rarely finish a podcast without missing a point we wanted to bring up, so let us know what we forgot. And if you have a topic you want us to talk about, let us know at Backyard Philosophy on Instagram and Backyard Philosophy Podcast on Facebook.